The IAW is speaking to you from Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. I'm speaking to you on behalf of Brit and Hebrew nations. And uh, today we are about to consider the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are found in the Bible, in the books of Exodus, in the books of Deuteronomy. And they give, that is, Ten Commandments. And um, there are different uh, commentaries concerning the significance of these of these Ten Commandments, because in addition to the Ten Commandments, another 603 commandments were also given. So there, there are those who explain that these Ten Commandments, as well as being specific orders, specific injun injunctions, uh, bearing uh, the penalties of their own for their transgression and uh, rewards in heaven for their observance, and also uh, rewards and benefits in this world, that these Ten Commandments are general, generic rules. That all of the commandments can be fitted under these Ten Headings. So that is what we have. And uh, there, another point is that we have we a claim that the Ten Commandments were intended for all of mankind. Now there is something in this. There is something in this because Prior to the giving of the law on Mount Sinai, when the Israelites uh, came out of Egypt led by Moses, they received the law on, uh, on, on Horeb, which is known as Horeb, or Horeb in English, and uh, Horeb is um, also known as Sinai, was another name for it, and they received the law, including the Ten Commandments. But before then, there had been a, uh, laws, there had been a general moral imperatives existent in the world. We, uh, we know that uh, in the very beginning, when uh, Cain killed Abel, God uh, condemned him for it. We, we know in Genesis 4.10 it was forbidden to murder. Also, murder had to be revenged. It's someone who, blood that was spilled, had to have blood spilled in to, order to atone for it. See Genesis 9.6. Also, they avoided taking the wives of other men. See the, the whole, uh, whole uh, incident with Abraham and Sarah. And the, and the king of, of the Philistines, and the king of Egypt, and so on. Uh, Genesis 20.11, uh, rape was to be punished. Uh, Genesis 34.31, also we have the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah that were to be, to be destroyed for their immorality and for their oppression of the poor. See so Genesis 28, verses 21-22 onwards, and so on. And there we all are, and we have uh, most of the... Uh, commandments, found in the Ten Commandments were already extent, there were moral imperatives that existed amongst mankind from the very beginning. So, from that point of view, we may say that the Ten, that the ten Commandments are, are universal. But, uh, not exactly, not, uh, not exactly so. Let's we'll see what uh, one verse in the Ten Commandments says. We'll look at Exodus 20. Uh, Exodus 20 says, in Verse, beginning from verse 1, and God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the, of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not take, make for yourselves an idol, within the form of anything that is heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but show them steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. For the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rest of the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long in the land that your Lord, your God, is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not, co you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Or, ma or male or female slave or ox or donkey, anything that belongs to your neighbor. So we see from looking at the commandments that they are, have uh, universal aspects about them, but they are primarily intended for the children of Israel. 
In the very beginning, God spoke and so, saying that I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And the Israelites had just been delivered from Egypt. Not all of the world, not all of mankind, only the Israelites. Also, is as a reward for um, honouring your father and mother, it says, your days may be long in the land that your Lord your God gives you. That is literally, uh, primarily, the land of the, of the Canaan that they were about to conquer. The Israelites were about to conquer. So the Lord's Ten Commandments are, are intended, were intended primarily for the Israelites, but they incorporate universal laws that already existed. And so, but so we have, um, we have a feeling that the Ten Commandments uh, somehow or other have something universal about them. Uh, people write to me on this subject, uh, so uh, we couldn't say that this is because they incorporate, they incorporate existing imperatives, uh, moral imperatives that already existed, that are universal, that apply to all of mankind. And there is another point, another point, or another few points in effect, that not only that, but the Israelites, the primary intention of the Israelites, when they were uh, created, when they received the commandments, was that they were to become mighty people and to uh, coerce the rest of the world to keep basic moral laws. Uh, but they were not good enough, they failed to do that, so in effect the, the Israelite nation split into two different sections. They split into the section of Judah and the section of the ten tribes of Israel. The ten tribes of Israel had the, had the task as if to say of becoming like the Gentiles, going down to their level and then elevating upwards and bringing the rest of the world forward with them. Whereas the Jews had the task of keeping the co covenant, of keeping the laws. And that is what they have been doing but, uh, up until now. And so do the ten tribes. We find the ten tribes amongst Western nations. We find them uh, prominent amongst the peoples of France, of Holland, of, uh, of Scandinavia, and out of the British Isles, uh, that is uh, England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, Ulster, all of those uh, places comprise the Los Angeles tribes of Israel, including their offshoots in North America, Canada, the USA, uh, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. That is where the ten tribes are, and these nations, through their empires, through their colonization in the past, and also through the present activities uh, since the Second World War, the activities of the USA, I have been more or less enforcing or encouraging or promoting uh, basic the observation of basic laws of humanity. There's been something in, do, doing this, something in this direction, which is what they were supposed to do. And so, too, we have this feeling that this is encompassed in the message given in the Ten Commandments. It is, um, it is found in America. We find in America that the Ten Commandments are important. It says that the Ten Commandments decorate the courtroom of the Supreme Court directly above the bench where the Honorable Judges are seated. And also, different courtrooms and so on are decorated with images of the Ten Commandments because uh, this is part of the duty that America had to uh, promote universal, univ a recognition of universal basic uh, uh, rights and obligations to all of humanity. This is what America is. And also because amongst the population of the USA, we find many descendants of lost and tribes of Israel and they instinctively have a yearning to return and, and reunite with Judah and also to reaffirm their Israelite ancestry. And this can be done, which can be done, we are in the process of doing it. The first steps towards doing it is to bring um, awareness and knowledge of this Israelite ancestry through biblical proofs and through historical researches and through uh, researching every field that is somehow or other pertinent to it. That's what we are doing, that's what we continue to do. And God willing, if we're able, we will keep on doing it. We would need to do to keep going uh, support from the public. So this too, if uh, the Lord Almighty wills, will be forthcoming. Thank you, may the Lord God of Israel bless you.